Hey guys, welcome to Jason Whiskey Wise. Myself, Jason, bringing you whiskey review number 86. And today we're gonna to review a brand new whiskey, which is actually new to my channel and new to the market. So this is the first Irish whiskey as well. I'll hold it up for you. It's called JJ Corey the Gale. Now this is a brand new Irish whiskey company. Uh, they just launched, I believe it was two weeks ago here in, the, in London. And I was at their press launch. If you, if you follow me on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook, leave the links over here. Go and check it out and you'll see actually I mentioned this company and they pretty much, it's an all female, all Irish whiskey, well first all female Irish whiskey company. So they're producing a blend at the minute. Um, what they do is they do something very different. Instead of having an actual distillery, they do bonding. So you're actually buying the distillate fresh from the actual distilleries. And you're buying the cast separately and you're combining the two together in a warehouse. So there's no distilling of your own. It's all about picking up stuff. And it's all a tradition that was used back in the past, I believe before the 1930s. And then because of what happened to the Irish economy and Irish whiskey fell through and now they're reviving it. And it's... Um, Quite an interesting story. So, I'm actually going to leave a picture of the founder who I got to meet as well. You'll see a picture over here. Her name's Louise, and also her brand ambassador or head of marketing for the United States, Blaze. Both really fantastic girls, and they took me through the whole range, taught me about everything, and fingers crossed we'll be able to go on a journey to West Island to visit them. So, I poured myself a dram because you guys will be like, Jason, you're talking too much. Uh, I put myself a healthy or well, a healthy amount because I want to save this for my friend. He's a big fan of Irish whiskies. So let me get my review style structure out of the way. Um, in terms of the age of this whiskey, it is a blend. It does have a sort of comprises of uh, four different components. Um, in terms of ABV, it's bottled at 46% ABV. Uh, the cast selection now is a blend, so there is going to be a lot that goes into it. However. This one is 100% transparent. You'll probably see over here, I'll put a picture, exactly what it says on the label. It's actually got the transparency for exactly what's inside. So it contains a 26-year-old um, Irish single malt whiskey at 5%. It contains a 15-year-old Irish single malt whiskey at, I believe, 27.5%. An 11-year-old Irish single malt whiskey at 27.5%. And the rest of it is a 7-year-old Irish single grain whiskey at 40%. So I try to remember this almost two weeks now, but I'm quite good with numbers. So it's got quite an interesting style as well because normally Irish whiskey or blended whiskey in terms of Irish blended whiskey is normally always 60% grain and 40% single malt. So this one is the opposite. It's got 40% grain and 60% single malt, giving you a little bit more to uh, offer up on terms of the palate and in terms of the complexity of this whiskey. Now, in terms of the actual distillery, it doesn't have one, like I mentioned. So this is actually a bonded rack house. And um, the actual company is known as the Chapel Gate Irish Whiskey Company, which you'll see over here, a little logo. Uh, the actual region for it is in County Clare Island. And I believe it's around about two or three miles away from the Atlantic coastline. So that's how it just shows you. So the storm that went past recently, the last two weeks here in the UK, that would have had some sort of influence on the upcoming whiskey. But uh, in terms of price range, the big bottle is priced at 70 to 80 pounds. So it is up there with a bit of a premium Irish whiskey in the market. And it is, a, I think it's a 750 mils and they also do a 50 mils. So two different bottling types, I believe, on the market. Now in terms of exclusivity, yes, it is exclusive. I was gonna say no for a second. Yes, it is exclusive. This one here being the Gale, batch number one is 7,000 bottles only globally and it's mainly going to be here in the UK I believe a distributor is in Germany that's selling it there and mainly in Northern America so very unique market and in terms of caramel coloring no color is added to this whiskey it's all natural color and uh, non chill filtered so you're getting all the goodness coming from this whiskey so without further ado let's begin by assessing the whiskey I have spoken too much let me put myself out of focus there you can see it's a very nice light color a little soft mistiness into this whiskey as well. So in terms of color, I'm gonna say it's a pale gold. Let's get into the review, so into the nose. So to begin on the nose with this whiskey, this is actually quite soft, quite mild, a little bit of a sort of citrus, but at the same time, I'm thinking more sort of like dried pineapples with a little burst of their character, um, as if you're smelling sort of almost a ripe pineapple. It does have that soft floral note that lingers just behind it. 
And for me, that's associated more with lavender. It's just very interesting. I, I did read the tasting notes of theirs. Personally, I haven't tried half the things they put on their tasting notes, so I'm not going to go exactly as, as I do with my own ones. I create my own. Uh, I get also a little bit of a sort of sweeter honeysuckle sweetness coming through. And now those citrus notes really coming fresh onto the palate. And this is like freshly squeezed lemon and lime juice combined together. Maybe even with a dollop of honey in the mixture, just giving that added sweetness. A little bit of beeswax as well, giving that little bit of a interesting sort of maybe beeswax combined in that honey. So if you get honey in a an actual jar with mm -hmm. a actual bee comb, a bit honeycomb, that's it, honeycomb inside, a little bit like that, all combi combined together. And you get a little sweetness as well, more like a vanilla sort of um, you call it vanilla cheesecake. But this is actually not the base. This is just the creamy vanilla topping on the top. Ooh. So let's move it next into the palette. Ooh. So into the palette for this whiskey. It starts out quite nice, creamy, almost quite a little bit sweet as well. It sort of gives you those, reminds me more or less of melting white chocolate. Quite silky as well as it sort of develops over the palette. There's lots of fruity aspects as well. This reminds me actually, quite interestingly enough, jackfruit. If you've ever tried jackfruit, but it's from like a tin, it's like yellow pieces, like you're biting into that with a sort of refreshing, unusual character. I'm also picking up apricots, and these are not sort of dried apricots, these are fresh, ripe apricots. A little tanginess from a green apple, and then a red pear as well making its way through on the sort of the front end of the palette, making its way to the back as it develops a little bit more sweeter with this little spice, a peppery spice on the edges of the palette. And this is a soft peppery spice. Interestingly enough, as it goes further back, it dries out ever so slightly. And it reminds me as if you're sort of like when you're going on holiday and you get to the coast and you get these nougats. It's like a, a chewy thing. You might see one, I might pop one over there. Um, but it's like one of those chewy nougats that you're biting into and you get the sweetness from it, but at the same time it's chewy. It's like a bit of pistachio coming through. A nice, also creamy icing with this little sweetness as it sort of coats the back end of the palate. I'm gonna have another sip and uh, see what other notes we can pick up. But this has got quite a complex body to it. So continuing back on from those icing sugar notes, this is a little sweetness as it develops, as I, as I mentioned at the back of the palate. This one gives you a little bit of a coastal salty taste as well. Normally I associate that with more of my island whiskies. Uh, not island, but islands from the islands like Talisker. No smoke in this one whatsoever, but this is like a, a little salty character, almost like a, a salted caramel as you combine it with the sweetness. That's what I'm going for, a salted caramel with a sort of medium body. It doesn't have, in terms of texture-wise, more medium. It's not heavy, it's not thick, it doesn't develop so much, and neither is it so light. But it does have some sort of consistency to it. So next we're going to move into the finish, and we'll complete our review on the, the Gale. So, into the finish for this whiskey, it does have a very interesting salty character which does remain on the back of the palate as it does sort of linger around. It is combined with this lot of what reminds me of dried pear loops. If you ever go to the health shop and try those bit, um, pear loops, they're sort of very nice, chewy, but then they also leave a little dryness to the back of the palate. They also get a little citrus, and this is a sweet citrus, so. I'm going to get clementine peel because it does have a, also a little waxy coating as it leaves itself on the end of the palate. And as it's fading away, a nice or sort of ripe green golden delicious apple imparting its last characteristics before it finishes off. I'd say more on the lines of a medium finish for this whiskey. So all in all, I'm going to give my rating for this one. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to give it an 88 out of 100. Reason behind this one um, is because more or less the flavors in this one are really very well married together and as a sort of an entry level whiskey or a starting level whiskey from sort of the Chapel Gate Irish Whiskey Company, it's a very interesting style. It is a premium whiskey so in terms of price point of view it is priced at around about 70 to 80 pounds so that can be seen as a little high but then when you think about it it contains a 26 year old Irish whiskey which is very difficult to come by so in that sense I would put it in sort of value for money because I have paid more than 100 pounds for Irish whiskey which some of them I wasn't happy with 
This one contains one of the oldest Irish whiskies in the blend. So, value for money, yes. Would I recommend adding water to this one? Personally, don't do it if you do have this bottle. I personally won't feel that it just sort of tears it down and just doesn't give you that much complexity. However, if you do wish to do it, by all means, go for it. And would I give it time? Maybe a little. Just let those years come out from this whiskey because if you do pour it and then prematurely just sort of drink it quickly, it won't give you all the flavors that you're looking for. It does take some time to let it sort of evolve and just show you all those characteristics which it is hiding. So give this one a try if you do manage to find it. I believe it's going to be very difficult to find 7,000 bottles and limited markets. But let me know what you guys think if you do get to try the JJ Corey, the Gale, and let me know your opinions. But for that note, I'm going to wrap up the video at that. I'm going to leave my subscribe button over here. Be sure to go check it out and be sure to subscribe so you stay up to date with all my latest videos. And also drop the video a like and share it with some friends if they like Irish whiskey because I feel this is one to give it a try. So anyway, on that note, this has been Jason Whiskey Wise and I'll catch you all for the next video.